Well, good morning, friends. Uh, welcome to Wellversed. You may or may not know that uh, we've had a couple of weeks away. We were overseas and uh, I'd pre-recorded the last couple of weeks that you've listened to. But here we are back again and uh, looking forward to spending some time with you this morning. I finished off that last little section that I did in Corinthians. Now I want to just take a few weeks uh, to look at Galatians. I want to make the point that, you know, for me, and somebody said this to me the other day, that they're appreciating this world verse on the basis that we're not just dissecting the Bible verse by verse, but rather dealing with the issues and the themes that are in those books. And that's what I'm looking for. So I want to do the same again this morning. Looking at Galatians, I want to just do some introductory stuff this morning, and then we'll have about five weeks of just picking up the themes uh, that are in Galatians. So let me say that the core issue uh, in Galatians is justification. Now, you know, we throw these theological words around, and many people don't understand what it means. But this word justification, the best description I've ever heard for justification or explanation is Take the word and listen, just as if I'd never sinned. Justification is Jesus looking at me just as if I'd never sinned. And that's critical for us in the context of what we do here, week by week by week. The early Christians were taught that Jesus plus keeping the law equaled a right standing with God. And Paul is at pains, especially in Galatians, in saying that it's not that. Paul is saying that Christ or grace plus nothing equals right standing. In other words, justification is not about what we do to win God's approval, Jesus' smile, but it's what he has already done. And that's critical because In this book, especially Galatians, works, things that we do, are excluded from this equation. We are not justified or put right by observing the law, but we are put right by faith in Jesus Christ. In other words, it's not what we do, it's what Christ has done. And so, in a sense, the book of Galatians, the letter to the Galatians from Paul, is the charter of Christian freedom. He's trying to say to his readers, get away from the law. Just have faith in Christ and do it with him. And so, just by way of introduction, Galatians is the charter of Christian freedom. Freedom from oppression, freedom from praise even, freedom from habit. People yearn to be free, if you think about it. And so this is what Galatians is about. Galatians, the letter, Paul is trying to bring freedom from the law. In other words, Christian legalism. So much of the early church were taught what they were trying to do was integrate Judaism and Christianity together, and it can't be. And this is what Paul is at pains to do here. He's trying to bring freedom from the law, uh, from Christian legalism. He's trying to bring freedom from the power of of sin, the power of sin to hold us back, to prevent us from becoming who we can be, the freedom to serve a living God and not just keep a whole set of rules and regulations. And if you think about it, the first converts to Christianity were Jews. And they faced persecution and legalism from the Judaism of the day. They were taught to submit to Jewish laws and traditions first, and then to build a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so this whole letter is written to try and bring them away from that way of thinking. The good news of Christianity is for all people. Jesus died for all people. It's not what we do, it's what he's done. Salvation is by grace. It's by what Christ has done. All we have to do is have faith in him and nothing else we don't have to earn salvation we don't have to earn acceptance christ has done that he did it on the cross all we ask to do is to just have faith 
And faith in Christ means real freedom in the context of what Paul is going to write about. So here's the letter in a sort of structured form, if you like. There's a brief introduction. Those who were accepting the Judaism were told that it was a perverted gospel. Uh, There's a confrontation with Peter even and the other church leaders who were trying to walk a a tightrope between Judaism and Christianity. And Paul was at pains to take issue with them. And he appeals to the reader's experience of the gospel of Christ, of their experience of what Christ had taught and shown. He shows how the Old Testament teaches about grace, and we don't have time to do that. But he was talking about that, about the relationship, the purpose of God's law and the relationship between law and God's promises in Christ. Christianity, in a sense, and all Paul is trying to hammer away here, is liberating. Christianity is liberating. It's faith that's not law. It's faith that sets us free from the shackles of where we've come from. It's a teaching about how we can carry one another's burdens and be kind to one another. And he closes with some personal thoughts on all these issues. And so in a nutshell, the letter is about law, it's about faith, it's about freedom, and it's about the Holy Spirit. And Paul's letter is extremely important for us. We must understand that Paul is trying to get the early Christians away from keeping a foot in both camps, as it were, doing the Jewish things first and then bringing the Christian things afterwards. He's trying to teach them that it's not what we do, what they do, but it's what has been done that is so critical for us as believers. We are not put right by observing the law. We're put right by faith in Jesus Christ. And so someone once said that Galatians is the charter of Christian freedom. And it's very important for us to understand this. After studying the letter, Martin Luther actually saw the false testimony of the Roman Catholic Church and started the Protestant movement. The whole Protestant movement, as Luther did it, came out of Galatians. Luther read Galatians and said, yes, this is what it's about. And so Luther discovered the salvation comes not through any church. Salvation does not come by following any kind of a law. Salvation comes solely by God's grace received through faith. It's got nothing to do with works. We can't earn our way into the kingdom of God. We can only receive Christ into our lives And that's all. And so the first five verses, Paul gives his credentials. The fact that he's been appointed by God through Christ, not by man. Paul's credentials had nothing to do with the churches. As far as Paul was concerned, his credentials were, I'm a man of God. I'm a man of Jesus Christ. And Paul knew that God had called him just as we are called. Nothing has changed. The call that God made on Paul's life, that Jesus made on Paul's life, he makes on our lives as well. There's nothing different. So don't believe only some of us are called. Please don't fall into the trap of believing that some of us are more holy than others because we're doing what we're doing or not doing what we shouldn't do. Jesus Christ has given each one of us work to do for him. Yes, of course. But he gives us his spirit for the strength. It's not what we do. It's what Christ does through us. And this is the point that Paul is trying to make the Galatians understand. It starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. And in verse 3, in that first chapter, Paul prays for grace and peace. These are the two main pillars of the gospel. First grace, then peace. Never the other way around. First grace and then peace. Always grace first. We are called by grace. We saved by grace. We justified just as if I'd justified by grace. And when we understand this, then comes the peace. 
Then comes the knowledge that it's not what I do. It's what Christ has done that makes the difference. Please, my friends, if you hold nothing else from what I've just said, take this with you. It's not what we do. It's what Christ has done. And when we understand that we don't have to recreate the wheel, we don't have to do anything brand new, we just need to receive Christ into our lives, and everything flows from that. Let's leave it there. And then we can pick up uh, some detail next week. Let's just pray a moment. And so, Father God, thank you. Thank you for people like Paul, who just, in a sense, saw the light and realized that it's not about us, it's about you. It's not about what we do, it's about what you do in and through us and with us that makes a difference. And so we just want to take a moment now to reaffirm the fact that we need you in our lives. We want you in our lives. We pray for you to fill us with your spirit to empower and guide and lead us in everything that we do so that our lives may tell your story. Not so much what we say, but by what we do. And so thank you for reminding us that that it's all about you. All we have to do is hold our hand out to you. May it be so as we do this now and as we go back into our day and back into our world uh, that you will be with us every step of the journey. Bless us now and thank you for the time we shared this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a wonderful day, friends, and may God bless you. Thank you.